Lowy River Aquarium, deep substrate, uh, lots and lots of plants, essentially no filter, uh, everything just goes straight down to that uh, first chamber, gets broken down by the bacteria, feeds a bunch of plants, and then ends up as mulm over here that gets pumped out occasionally. So, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking this aquarium could be uh, Father Fish approved, you know. But for me, I just love seeing all my African cichlids zipping in and out of all those plants. Just using all that space. Anytime you look at this aquarium, however many cichlids you see in here, there's literally at least twice as many in here. Just always coming and going. Like right now, the largest ones in here, you can't even see them right now. I'm standing right in front of the tank because they're just back in that jungle. There's one right there. Well, it was one heck of a spring project, but the fish basement annex, well, it's here. <laughs> We're in it. All echoes and everything. And uh, as you can see, it's ready for us to start uh, doing some DIY aquarium planning. Now you might notice the floor isn't done yet, and uh, the reason I held off on that is because I was thinking, what good does it do to show you guys around and ask your opinion uh, and your help in designing these DIY aquariums if I just put out a video and then just start building aquariums, you know? So I was like, you know what? Let me go over it right now, get some feedback from you guys, show you what I'm thinking, give you the rationale of why I'm thinking what I'm thinking, and then there'll be time in between for you guys to watch the video, to think about it, to give me your input, and uh, then I can work on the floor and everything, and then I can obviously read and respond to your input and, and go back and forth and, you know, figure some things out. And then uh, once the new floor is in, then I can put down some tape and we can see, you know, like I'll get a few different colors and we'll, we can spec out. We can say, hey, well, here's a lot of people are thinking this layout, and here's that's the blue tape, and here's what I'm thinking, this layout, it's the green tape, and here's somebody who came off the wall with some crazy I didn't even think of, but I like it, here's that tape, you know. Hopefully that happens, because, uh, you know, I like to think I have good ideas here, but a lot of times you're too close to it. I see it every day, you know, maybe I look past things. I, I've already seen it many times, where another set of views online, people look at it, have really put out great ideas, so... It's entirely possible that I go with my ideas, entirely possible to implement some of your ideas, or it's entirely possible someone comes up with something, I go 100% with that idea. <laughs> we don't know, but uh, there's gonna be time in between. So it's, uh, when I'm soliciting your input, it's, it's not, not just, you know, for, hey, you know, comment below kind of thing. I really want your input, and I'm not gonna start building everything, anything, until I have a chance to, to get that input, think about it, put some tape down, and all good, that good stuff. So. That being said, let me show you around now and let me tell you uh, what my thoughts are and some of my rationale because some of the tank design it has to be certain ways because of lessons learned for me in the fish room, especially with keeping monster fish in. And I'll talk about that as we go through. So one thing I'm really happy to show you guys is healthy, happy discus swimming around aggressively, happy to see me because they want food, but I like to think it's because me and uh, you can see that they're all healthy and happy again. So I hate to make the videos where I screw up and uh, you know cost uh, the life of a couple fish, but I am super thrilled to see these guys not only back, but I mean all the way back, just vigorous. You can see uh, if I put my fingers in here, they're going to be right up here. Everyone saying hello. Everyone happy and healthy once again. Eh, let me give these guys some food. Back to their old selves, not bothered by cameras, feeding aggressively. Man, it's good to see these guys get back. So just do a little paint touch up in the fish basement annex, and I see these things every time I paint, I always get these weird little anomalies in the paint. I don't know if anyone else gets that or not. It's very strange. Almost like it just climbs up the wall there. Hmm. I don't know, very weird, but uh, yeah, it's looking good and it is time to do the floor. So first of all, my assistant and I will uh, take you around the room and uh, go through everything. So let's just, uh, let's just start over on the left side. So there's a, a door 
and windows on each far wall. And a key thing is I need to have an aisleway lined up with these doors here. So nothing can block that because that's actually the space to go into the other part of the house. So need to have, obviously not have that blocked. Uh, over here, I have a dedicated line just for the mini split. So obviously nothing would go here blocking any of that. And I have uh, a drain system for anything I want to drain out or dehumidifier drainage or anything like that. So again, nothing blocking that. Um, another consideration is getting around. So for example, I, I can't just make, uh, well, I don't want to make it such that there's not proper pathways to comfortably walk. I don't want giant tanks right next to other giant tanks looking uncomfortable. So there'll be some spacing. Uh, and the other thing is, is all these tanks are going to be large. Uh, it's not a scenario where I want to pack this room with, uh, you know, dozens or hundreds of small tanks. So with all that in, you know, put in perspective, uh, some of the, the ground or the, the framework for what we're looking to do here. Uh, and the other thing is, is the, the room. So, you know, I call the room 33 feet long and actually I measured the other day and it's 32 feet and nine inches, nine and a half inches you know, in between the molding and all that. So, but I'm just gonna call it 33. And the same here, it's 20 feet across, but it's really 19 feet, 11 inches, you know, but again, 20 feet. So that's what we're working with. Um, and uh, before I get into my first thoughts for tank design, I wanna tell you, uh, I wanna explain um, a couple of the, the things that are important. So, so in keeping a, a bunch of big tanks already, like the 3000 gallon and 1800 gallon, that sort of thing, and keeping uh, monster fish, uh, there's some lessons learned and there's some design decisions that I want to put into these aquariums to uh, basically fix those problems. So for example, uh, what, with the monster fish, the, with the 3,000 gallon, it's all one big aquarium and there's no way for small monsters to start off in there. They always have to be grown up in something else, but then they actually have to get pretty big uh, before they can actually go into the 3,000 gallon. So an example of that is uh, arowana. I had to grow out arowana all the way to you know, 14, 16 inches so they'd be big enough not to get attacked by three foot peacock bass and, and dang near two feet long Oscars, 16, 16 inch Oscars and everything. Uh, you'd be surprised. I tried an arowana one time at 12 inches, 13 inches, and they went after them hard, you know, and I had to, it was hard to get them back out and get them to grow out. And then unfortunately, uh, he ended up jumping out of the grow out. So there's a problem with monster fish because monster fish, they want to eat, they want to attack and dominate medium sized monster fish. So big monster fish want to do that to medium, medium want to do that to small, and small want to do that to, to little grow out guys. So you have to have some way of growing that out. So uh, what I want to do is create an aquarium that is capable of having different zones or all one big zone and have it be configurable uh, up to me. So the aquarium that I'm thinking about doing that is in is the big 33 footer. Okay, it's really weird that paint anomaly I was talking about the other day. Yeah, it just keeps uh, keeps growing. I don't know what's going on. It's sort of spreading up the wall and onto the windowsill. Hmm. I wonder if somebody's traversing the fish room via the window. So you probably don't recognize this aquarium because I haven't debuted it yet, but I wanted to show you the wetlands filter because you're going to hear me talking a lot about it for the annex and uh, I wanted you to see that uh, I have one going and I've been super impressed with it. Speaking of the annex, there it is. So my thought is to take advantage of this big long back wall here with all the plugs conveniently located for aquariums and no windows in the way. You gotta love purpose-built fish rooms. Uh, and to build a, uh, basically, the aquarium main version of the Zingu River. <laughs> so it would have an upper, middle, and lower part of the river. So it would start over here on the left with a giant wetlands filter. A massive version of the other wetlands filter I built, which I've been so happy with. Uh, and then it would have a couple of sections, or one section, one upper section of the aquarium where, uh, so you've got the, the wetlands filter here, then you've got your first seven or eight feet is the upper Zynga River, and that would probably be a little shallower, maybe 30 inches deep, 
and that would be the grow out zone. And then it would transition down and now we would go down to maybe, you know, 36 or 40 inches deep and we go another, you know, eight feet uh, or maybe a little more. And that's kind of our middle Zingu River. And, and maybe, you know, again, these are, these are rough numbers. Maybe I just dropped down all the way to four feet uh, deep and then uh, that's the middle river. But let's just say 36, 40 inches. And uh, then you go through that and then you drop down to a full four feet. And then you would go like a full 16 feet of the lower Zingu River, which would be our deep uh, pool over here. And we would have stronger water coming down this side and we would be sloping down a couple times with the aquascape in there, uh, creating these different zones. And because I'm building plywood aquariums with sections of glass, it creates areas where there's wood structure and you have glass on either side and that would be the perfect place to put partitions. So these would be, uh, you know, the classic egg crate or light diffusers, uh, grating kind of thing. So the water would flow through it, but fish wouldn't be able to go through it. And I would paint it black, of course, and use multiple ones together to make it very strong. And then I would be able to insert those in, in different places. So I could divide the river up into three or four sections, or I could have it two sections or just one big section. And uh, that would basically allow me to grow out baby fish or just to keep in one river habitat, I could have monster catfish, peacock bass, and arowana living in that 16 foot, four feet deep section. And then up here, I could maybe in the middle river, I have some Oscars that aren't quite as aggressive and some, uh, some large geophagus and paracyclids. And then maybe further up the river, there's, you know, other types of cichlids, maybe angels, maybe discus, maybe anything, who knows, uh, as well as a place like an estuary for babies to grow up. Uh, and then of course, a massive wetlands filter. And then there would be plants all out of the wetlands filter and all emergent growth uh, coming out of the top of the aquarium. So 33 feet of uh, vegetable filter should put a pretty big dent in, uh, in nitrates. So that's the thought for that aquarium. Yeah, so I'm calling that the 33 footer. It would be roughly between 3,500 and 4,000 gallons, all depending. And because uh, there's a little fluctuation in how far I can come out, I would come out a minimum of four feet from the wall, could go up to five feet. And the same with the height, you know, uh, could be a little deeper in different sections. So that's the first tank. And the second tank I'm thinking of is over here. And I put in the pole that uh, we could build a massive community aquarium. And uh, this is where I'd like to do that. So this would be a 12 foot long aquarium, but I would like to make it more shallow, maybe only two feet tall. Um, and it could come out from the wall, either two feet, three feet, 30 inches, anywhere in there. And this would be the aquarium that I could really get in there and get intricate with the aquascape and really have it heavily planted. And then of course, still have 12 feet long of, uh, a massive community aquarium. So this would be the one where we could get real deep on it. It would be just, just literally like thousands of smaller fish with a very in intricate uh, aquascape and uh, something I can work in very easily. So that gives us an aquarium here and a big aquarium over there and that leaves these middle zones here. So you essentially have, because of the support poles, you have a zone here a zone in the middle where my assistant is, and a zone over here. Now the options here, uh, this is where <laughs> I haven't decided. Uh, so I could do, um, so in between these poles, each one is, is nine feet. So I could do nine foot wide aquariums, and I could go anywhere from five to six feet front to back without impeding too much on the back and without impeding on my walkway over here. Or I could do a 27 foot long aquarium that goes all the way in between and still stops over here with enough room to have a walkway around this way and a walkway around the other side of this pole here. So I would have a walkway around there and I could have one large aquarium in the middle, you know, built around these poles. So picture the, the type of aquarium where you have structure kind of an island structure around the pole. The pole would be obviously boxed in the aquarium and the same sort of thing over here. And this aquarium uh, would have to be about five feet wide um, to, uh, to work, uh, to fit the room comfortably. Now, if I do that, 
it makes it such that this tank here needs to be more like two feet so that I have plenty of room in between. Um, if I don't do that, if I build like a nine by six here and a nine by six over there and leave the middle open, then this aquarium can be wider, say three feet off of the wall, and it kind of gives you that real nice flow into the, the monster 30, <laughs> 33 footer over there. So I should be recording the rest of this video, but man, sometimes I just get stuck in front of the 750 Amazonian Islands Aquarium. It's just hard to walk by here and, uh, you know, not sit down and check these guys out. Especially those albino geophagus. They are getting some size to them and looking good. As well as those schools of Tetra. That was uh, definitely a good decision to get those big schools in here. And it's funny because until you feed them, you don't realize how many there are because a lot of them will be back there in that wood root. And it's uh, not until you really focus in on them that you see that there's just literally tons of them back there all mixed in that root. All right, let's get back to uh, talking about some new DIY builds. So I know that's a dump of a lot of things, but it really just boils down to uh, it's important to have a setup where I can have those dividers. Uh, it's important that the aquariums are large. Again, none of the small stuff. Uh, the, the one over here on the wall that I'm saying would be low, like two feet tall, that would still be five or 600 gallons, even at that height, being 12 feet long, or could be more if it comes out. Uh, and then the other part of it is just options, right? If I build a very large aquarium in the middle, that would be, it would actually, at, at 27 feet, five feet uh, front to back, and then three or four feet tall, like, that comes again in, in that three to 3,500 range uh, as far as gallons. If I, uh, if I go with nine by sixes, uh, you know, on either side and have the middle open, then those aquariums would range between 1,000 and 1,500 gallons. Uh, again, just depending on a, a couple settings. So we have, uh, so again, this, these, I've been looking at this room a lot. I'm in, I've been D, you know, DIY aquarium theory crafting for quite a while. And these are what I've come up with. I'm really, really, really into building the Zingu River Aquarium, the 33 footer. It would, be, it would take something special to get me off of that. Uh, I feel like there's really only the thing on this, on the, on the brick wall over here, I feel like that, uh, that Aquascape Aquarium is the best fit there. Plus, in the poll, it was pretty clear everybody wanted to see a massive community aquarium with, with that heavy aquascaping, and that's where I could achieve that. And then the other real thing is, is in the middle of the room. Do, would, I, would I want another giant aquarium, or would I want, you know, would I want a single 3,000 gallon aquarium spanning the whole, you know, most of the distance of the room? Uh, or would I want those 2,000, 1,500 gallon aquariums to give me different, uh, uh, different bio, you know, biotope types, you know, like so one could be one setup, one could be the other versus the big one in the middle is kind of all one setup. And then of course, the aquariums on the side gives you that beautiful view of the, uh, the big aquarium in the back versus you've got an aquarium here, you're, you're kind of, you're sort of basically creating three aquariums with aisles in between. You'd have an aquarium here, an aquarium here, you know, an aisle in between, and then you would come back over here, you know, be on the back side of this aquarium, you'd have an aisle, then the other aquarium. So it kind of boils down to that, or it boils down to having that big open space in the middle and having aquariums here and there with the walkway in the middle and the walkway on the side. So, yeah. Um, so that's what I've come up with, uh, and that's uh, the reasoning behind it. Um, the, most of the fish I do want to keep have some size to them, so the size of the tanks, they need to be in line with the size I'm talking about here. Um, and then it's just a matter of uh, if you guys can come up with uh, any other better ideas, especially I would say the middle part of the room is the really up in the air part. I don't have a, you know, a real convicted conviction on, I don't have a real strong feeling on, you know, how I want to do that yet. So uh, that is definitely up in the air. Um, so again, give me your thoughts and uh, I'll work on finishing the floor and at that point the room is going to be ready for building and you know me, I'm going to get kind of anxious to build so <laughs> give me your feedback quick. Um, and then uh, we'll circle back, let's say in a week, and then I'll put the tape down based off of that and then we can get a better idea of you know, how it looks in the room. You know, I know it's, I'm pointing around and all that and I know it's hard on video. 
So, uh, you know, I think that'll help to get that down to really get an idea of the scale, you know, of, of how big we're talking and, and what the spacing is like. So I really appreciate you guys watching this and I appreciate all your, you know, the feedback to come. And I know I have a high, <laughs> I have a feeling that someone's going to surprise me with something, a really good idea because I've been fortunate that a lot of people watch this video are those people who do have good ideas and, and, uh, and they're, they share them with me. So that's awesome. So, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate the support of the members and the patrons, and uh, I'll get this floor done, and then it starts to get real because it turns from a house construction project into a whole bunch <laughs> of a mega DIY aquarium build. So, it's going to get real pretty quick. So, uh, give me your feedback as soon as you can, and uh, we'll move forward with that, and uh, we'll do DIY aquarium theory crafting part two in the next video with your guys' ideas and mine in tape on the floor. Thanks for watching.